Well, hello there, people in the viewerverse. Tis I, Captain of the Steves. The day comes for you guys. In the viewerverse, I'm going to be chatting about UBI Soft. And um, they're in a little bit of sticky water. If sticky water's even a thing. I should say hot water, really, shouldn't I? Because I don't think water gets sticky. Anyway, talking of water and liquids of forms, I've got myself a cup of tea. So what does that mean? It means we're going to be settling in. We're going to have a little natter about what's going on over at UBI Soft Studios. Oh, that's warm. I just purchased that. I purchased over there. Anyway, you're probably wondering where my hat is. My hat is down here. My hat is there. Yes, there's my hat. Lovely, awesome hat. Those that make and all that sort of shenanigans. If you're that interested. Yes, I've never actually looked. Oh. Lions, apparently. Yeah, Lions of London. Brilliant. Lovely, lovely hat. I'm not wearing it today. I thought I'd show off the magistry that is my hair. Oh, oh look at that. Flickety flick. A bit like a Timothy advert, but shitter, isn't it? Right, anyway, let's jump on over and let's have a little look at what I'm on about. Because some of you might not know that they're in some hot water. Sticky water. What am I on about? Heck. Here we go. Boom. There I am, over on the Tinterwebs. Yes, I'm on the Tinterwebs now. Here we go. So over here, it says, in reaction to their underwhelming financial results for 2022 to 2023, UBISoft has confirmed the cancellation of three unannounced games. So we didn't even know what they were, people. On top of four that were cancelled in July of 2022, bringing the total to seven cancelled games in the space of just six months. And this is, this is over on Nintendo Life. And here's the article on Nintendo Life. Uh, I know that they did that Mario and Rabbit sort of game, which just didn't really go down too well, did it? But it, it does look kind of nice. But then looking nice and playing nice are two different things, aren't they? Which I often find with UBI soft titles. It's like Fenrix Rises. Now, I picked that up because I liked the visual art style and I love Greek mythology and I thought I would fall in love with Fenrix Rises and I didn't, I didn't. I loved it for maybe the first maybe two hours and then after that, following all the different sorts of mission icons on the screen and jumping to places, here you go, rather than um, just talk about it, I've got some footage here, let me make that nice and big while I'm chatting. It's going to be a bit Inception-like because you've got a double me, you got double Captain Steve for your monies. Yeah, but if you want to actually hear this with the audio and stuff, I put all the video links in the video description. I'd also put a card in the top right hand corner to this so you can hit it up if you want. But look at it. Look how be beautiful this is. The thing is, though, is you're very handheld inside of this massive open university type well type scape, if you like. And with like little mini icons, go here, go there, do this, do that. And it takes away from the beauty and the majesty that is this open world exploring experience. I just found it was a little bit too handholdy. Any of the puzzles that you come across were a little bit done and tested to death after a while. After you've done maybe the first, I don't know, hours worth of puzzles, you've kind of got the idea of what all the puzzles are going to be like throughout this whole experience of this game. And also the enemies, they weren't overly that much of a, a challenge. There was the odd the odd time that I felt slightly challenged. And you can change the difficulty, don't get me wrong. But anyway, I've done a full review of this anyhow. But this is what I'm trying to get at. Is any game from UBI Soft feels kind of the same in a roundabout way. You pick up any of their titles and it is beautiful worlds, beautifully done. But then they give you this linear run of it. You may as well just watch a movie or something, you know, because it almost feels like you're playing out the path that they want you to play. They haven't broke any molds for a while. I would say that maybe these games start off as some kind of passion project and they look amazing and the ideas that they're bringing together are fantastic. I'd imagine there's a lot of excitement inside of the UBI Soft Studios, but then maybe that fizzles out. Maybe that fizzles out when the game starts becoming into actuality, you know? So anyways, that's that's kind of how I feel with why maybe they're struggling with some of this stuff. And yeah, it's it's a bit of an oddity. Anyway, let me just jump back over to that reactions area and we're we sort of scroll on down because there's a game called Skull and Bones that they've been making for freaking ages. And it's been delayed again, which I think this is the sixth time or or so that Skull and Bones has been delayed. It's 
it's a little bit crazy and it, it's not even a game that i think i would like to actually play now i mean if i did want to play a pirate adventure right next to it sea of thieves exactly and apparently most of the skull and bones you spend most of the time on the ship so it it feels like a cut down version of something that's been done and done better so it's not something that i'm excited for skull and bones i'm not gonna lose any sleep over that one i am looking forward to avatar though the frontiers of pandora and there is another exciting ip that they've been given as well which is, we're going to touch on a bit later which is the star wars open world game that they're working on i've already done some videos on that showing just how excited i am for that but anyway another title that i was very excited for for ubi soft ubi soft north america announced four years ago and they were showing some oh, let's just blink and click it i've got i'm muted anyway but we make this nice and big on the screen but you know I'm a massive fan of like No Man's Sky and the open universe and transitioning from space to planets and to other planets. Well, you could do all of that inside of this. Yes, you didn't have like a whole universe. You had a solar system or a little mini galaxy area that you go around. But it was freaking awesome. It was a solar system, not a galaxy. But yeah, it looks freaking great. You can actually play as some sort of mutant monkey or this lady that you see in here. It looks like there's quite a lot of different abilities. There's sort of spying and looking down at stuff. There's a lot of augmentation a mutation going on with these dodgy scientists getting up to shenanigans that you've got to put a stop to it looked freaking amazing a really cool looking game and whatever reason we haven't heard too much out of the ubi soft studio now i've heard i don't know whether this is true but the actual lead that was on this project that loved it so much or and the likes and all the good and evil sort of universe because it's good and evil one yeah quite liked his primates and he actually went to work at a monkey sanctuary i don't know whether that's true i mean if it is that's pretty cool but at the same time what about your game because this looked freaking great but then at the same time you can already see inside of this gameplay footage there's markers in places as well and so you probably would have been sort of steered to where you go rather than actually looking at everything can explore and everything can work and stuff out on your own but at the same time it did look freaking great it even had elements of ship customization in this where you can take parts of the ship off and recalibrate it to how you want there you go that's the size of this actual um universe you're in it's not a universe it's not a galaxy it's a solar system there's a nice small area and there's lots of different vehicles that you can get into like i say there was some customization i don't know whether they're going to show it in this bit of footage but this was i was very yeah here it is i mean look at that how cool is that that is really cool isn't it that's bonkersly cool i was really looking forward to this title it ticked so many boxes for me I don't know whether it had multiplayer in it or, or anything like that or any sort of sort of cross play or anything but even as a solo experience i was extremely excited for this one even the ship combat looks great the planet generation looks great everything in this was ticking like i say all my boxes i wanted this game i was super hyped for this and where is it gone they haven't said that this is one of their cancelled titles so we can only but assume it's still being worked on and yeah very awesome so I, I would love to see this come into fruition if this came out i'd imagine this would sort of put them back in the green because it looks great as long as they don't freaking stick microtransactions all over the freaking thing which again is something that ubisoft isoft is quite good at doing it's like that fenrix rises right i purchased that and then a couple of weeks later there was some sort of update that came up for it that gave you a few extra bits of cosmetics they let you change from being female to being male and a few other bits and bobs thrown in and, it, and then they were trying to charge like an extra 20 odd quid for it and it's like oh no hold on that's just the rest of the game surely i should just bloody get that for free i just paid 40 quid for this thing in a sale yeah uh, it's uh, yeah not overly impressed with some of the tactics of ubisoft and I think that's part of the problem, because what I've also heard is although that they're in sort of, you know, hot water at the moment and they've got a few problems going on, apparently they were going around to sort of developers, other sort of publishing houses, sort of saying, do you want to buy UBI soft? And apparently they were sort of, no, <laughs> no, we don't. But I, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not an insider, but this is what I'm reading. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm hearing via Twitter and rumors and all sorts of other stuff. But at the same time, I'm thinking, well, UBI Soft has got quite a lot of decent IPs. I mean, they've just signed a contract with Disney, 
to start making a Star Wars open worldy game. Now you just saw there that game that I was just showing that the Beyond Good and Evil 2 has got some very awesome game mechanics. Game mechanics that could tie in quite nicely to a Star Wars type universe. In the background here people I'm playing Star Wars Squadron which is not a UBI soft game I think it's EA but um, it was fairly similar <laughs> with the amount of microtransactions and stuff so yeah it's, it's, it's one of those isn't it yeah it was made by EA games yeah, I thought I was right there. Again a little bit more in Inception you've got me uh, over that way yeah <laughs> in a Thundercats t-shirt. I'm actually wearing an Atari t -shirt. Look at this. Atari! Yeah, you've got to be of a certain sort of generation to know about Atari, although they did make a remake of their console. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Yeah, so UBI Soft has got some great IPs. It's like Fenrix Rises. It was actually good in a roundabout way. They could improve it. There's so many ways that they could improve that game. But what I was thinking is, why doesn't Sony buy them? You know, they've got some awesome IPs there. It's like... Assassin's Creed, there's already been movies made of Assassin's Creed. Well, Sony's got a whole freaking movie house. They could make some more Assassin's Creed movies to coincide with games, which would be great. You know, the, the Avatar. Oh, well, you can't make a movie of that. There's already movies out there. <laughs> Did you get what I'm saying? You know, they've got some great IPs. They just need to get themselves out of this whole sort of idea of pandering to what they think the people and the players want and make a game they need to make a passion project they need to get passionate about something and make a proper passion project that's what they need to do and it's like star wars okay ubi soft has got loads of developers in there loads of artists so why not just approach them and say right who amongst you are proper star wars fans who out of all of you are freaking geeking the heck out of this idea of making a Star Wars open world game? And get them, and even if they are in different houses of new BI soft, you know, different studios, just make sure they're working on the same engine and say, right, well, you've got Dagobah. Go make that. Go make Dagobah. This is the this is the height and the width of the character model. Go make Dagobah. And then these guys, oh, you want to make Curasund. Right, great. You go make Curasund. There's the height and width. Boom and get them making them completely separately <laughs> yeah and then at least we're going to get very different feeling sort of planets when we go and visit them because they're actually made by two different dev teams which would be freaking great and at least that's an idea it's, it's an idea amongst many i'm sure that there's many ways that you could save um ubi soft and ubi soft although they've got a bit of a tarnished name if someone like sony bought them and you know sony studios and what sony are actually you know akin to it could sort of pull them out of that rut you know it's a bit like when volkswagen bought into skoda you know people are quite happy to buy a freaking skoda now because they know that they're going to be vetted by freaking volkswagen you know you get in almost a volkswagen at the price of a skoda which would be the similar sort of thing you're getting a ubi soft that's been vetted and approved by freaking sony that's going to take all the bullshit out you know <laughs> and hopefully play test it and say you know what that, that's too handholdy no don't do that so i'm really hoping that sony see this as an opportunity to buy a software house bring in a load of developers and make some freaking decent games and i think right now would be the perfect time to do that i mean you've got to think sony sony is massive and they've got the power they've got they've got what they need to turn it around if anyone could do it it would be freaking sony so yeah, if there is anybody out there watching that's part of Sony, which probably isn't the case, you know, it it would be quite cool. I honestly do think that there there is there is some merit, there is something that could be salvaged from this. Or even if you're not, even you know, if you, I think UBI Soft could turn this around. They just need to work on something with passion and love and interest rather than thinking how can this continue to make money after its launch. Make a game that you guys, that you guys at UBI Soft want to play, okay? So just really knuckle down, make something freaking awesome, make something fun, try and bring in some things that haven't been seen before, make a few groundbreaking things in there. And that, yeah, just make a less handholdy experience. Look at Elden Ring. Look how well Elden Ring did. You know, a lot of your games just take out all the freaking junk and the markers and some of the HUD. You know, we've been playing video games long enough to work shite out ourselves, mate. You know, it's it's one of those. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> that's, that's pretty much all I've got. A device for UBI soft and UBI's. I mean, look at oh, what is it? Oh, that that Watchdogs game. Yeah, that looked great. Looked great. Played it for about an hour, and I was like, when do I get to play this? When do I get to actually do what I want in this game? No, nope, that's not happening. It's pretty much handholdy, handholdy. You go here, you go there. You recruit this pierce person. You recruit that person. It just felt. <laughs> Nothing like what I saw in the trailer. No. So there we go, people. That's my sort of synopsis on UBI Soft. Um, I think it's a salvageable situation, but I think it's a problem with management more so than the developers. And I honestly think if the developers just make a game that they're passionate about, that they want to make themselves, they could turn this around. Also, also, I'm thinking if Sony wanted to, they could buy them, and I'm fairly sure Sony could turn it around. Sony's got the power, the know-how, and the studio to do that and they could just buy into the ips you know just keep the best developers of ubi soft and their creative team and you get all their ips and a lot of their contracts that they've already signed they've got one with freaking disney mate and the, you know you, they've got to make a certain amount of star wars games freaking heck sony you know <laughs> buy them yeah i'll buy them yeah i'll buy that for a dollar okay anyway my tea oh it's still hot lovely I could have been drinking this while playing you some video footage and shut up for a bit, couldn't I? Anyway, it seems my cough is at bay anyway today, people. Feeling a bit better. Feeling a bit more myself. Anyway, people, you don't want to just watch me drink a cup of tea until the end of dawn of times, do you? Well, it's not going to take me that long. It's been about 10 minutes. Anyway, people, I'm going to salute a mondo out. Boom! That's for you guys and the viewer verse. All of you. including Yeah, including you. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. You're not even watching. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. See you next time. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.